Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode, there's actually going to be no games played in terms of live comms and stuff like that. We're actually going to play through the entirety of the January transfer window and see if we can pick up any deals. But of course, we shall quickly review the fixtures that you've missed. The first of which was a disappointing away draw against Leicester City. James Madison and Harvey Barnes actually put them 2-0 up in front going in at half-time. But Jean-Pierre and Danny Olmo managed to get two goals in two minutes to level things up. And at that point, I was hoping we would push on for a winner. But it wasn't to be, and we only got a point. Similar story in the Southampton game. Once again, in a weird draw, we are really dropping off the pace in terms of a real title challenge. Luca Pellegrini did put us in front in 11 minutes, but then Guga in the 92nd minute for Southampton got the equaliser, which crushed our hopes. Back to winning ways though, this time away from home against Everton. Elix Mariba and Wayne Knowles with a couple of goals to get our three. Moise Keane had put them in front inside nine minutes and Yerry Mina made it for a tense last five minutes or so with his 85th minute goal to make it 3-2, but we held on. Next up was a home tie against Chelsea and a really impressive performance and a really impressive result. Erling Haaland got himself two goals in the 20th minute and the 31st. Onjean made a 3-0 in the 69th minute. And then Chelsea did eventually get a goal through Myron Baudou, if that's how you say his name. And Frank Kessie missed a penalty as well for them. So a comfortable, in the end, 3-1 win against someone who was definitely challenging for the top four spots. And finally, just before January hit us, was a 2-0 home win against Newcastle United. Haaland in the second minute, Weir Knowles in the fourth minute. And that was it. No more goals after the fourth minute. So, with those set of fixtures, we currently sit in third position. We have dropped off the pace quite a little bit. Five points behind Arsenal now, who seem to be the main contenders this season. We're only one point behind second place. Manchester City, though, on 40 points. So, we're definitely not out of it. Um, but them two away draws really did cost us. So moving on to today's episode, we will go through the January transfer window. Just a couple of things as January ticked over I wanted to show you. Esposito scoops award as world under 21 footballer of the year, which is always nice to see. He hasn't necessarily had the best year in my opinion, but at 21 years old, he's still uh, developing and performing really well. And this one was the one I really wanted to show you. Wayne Knowles won the European Golden Boy Award. Now he has been getting a lot of game time due to Esposito's injury. And he's definitely improving slightly, not really at the pace I would like him to. But hopefully with continued game time, that will start to speed up a little bit. So January transfer window has opened and Kerra has already been linked to Spurs and 57 million. I doubt I would sell him for that sort of fee. But I would be open to selling him, to be honest, because one of the issues we're going to have in this window will only have around £10 million to spend and £47,000 free in the wages. A lot of our transfer budget and wage budget got eaten up when we were offering a lot of our new players new contracts new long long term four year contracts um so whilst our squad is settled and um really really secure it's highly unlikely we're going to be making any big moves unless someone is sold and as things tick over we do actually have two new signings coming to the club the first of which is anis abdeli an 18 year old midfielder for worth 500 pounds he's tunisian and he looks absolutely fantastic to me he's still only got a couple of stars to go in his uh, potential development. I will be looking to loan this boy out straight away if he will accept a loan move. But he looks pretty good and for 500k you can't complain. And the same can be said for Ali El Sayed. He's an 18 year old centre back for 650k. He is Egyptian. He's already been capped at international level. And he looks like a really solid central defender already at only 18 years old. Again, two star current, four star potential in our squad. A little bit less than I was hoping for. But um, some link, uh, loan game timeout should hopefully help him develop nicely. And just as we were talking about potentially selling Kara or potentially selling Onjean, we have two offers straight away coming in. Now, in terms of Tilo Kerry, he's 27 years old, so he's not the youngest anymore. He's obviously already reached his potential, so he's not going to grow all that much. So it is a player I would be open to selling. I don't necessarily have a backup replaced, but getting some money in the bank wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I think I would actually accept around 65 to 70 million pounds for uh, Tilo Kerra so I'm going to negotiate 85 and the withdrew straight away that's absolutely fine as well if we don't end up selling him then that is absolutely hunky dory he stays in the squad in terms of Onjean uh, I'm not so sure with Onjean I will I will ask for silly money again looking to accept maybe around 75 70 
They've come in with a £57 million offer, non-negotiable, so I'm going to reject that straight away. But there is scope to potentially move some of these players on. So we haven't even got to our first game of the January period yet, and we've actually accepted, or are about to accept, a th around about a £30 million offer for Jack Butland. He's obviously our backup goalkeeper now that we signed Jordan Pickford. We're at £30 million without our sort of transfer budget that we have available. I think I'm going to snap it up and look to sign somebody a bit cheaper to play as backup. He has been complaining about lack of game time. So the fact that we're getting £30 million from him, although he is a very good, very talented goalkeeper and the likelihood is anyone I bring in isn't going to be quite as good as Jack Butland. But for the sort of money I can get, I'm going to take it. So we are at our first game of the January transfer period, which is at home against West Ham in the Premier League. I'm going to quickly show you the fixtures that we're going to play. Leicester in the FA Cup, Bournemouth in the league, Leeds, Brighton, Spurs, and again against West Ham in the Premier League once again. But we're going to submit our team for West Ham and we'll see how we're going to line up in today's game. Obviously, our natural position, Bella Kocha, Patella, Onjin in, in the defence, Dodo and Pellegrini as our wing-backs, Mariba and Sanchez and Danny Olmo in them triangle in the centre. Erling Haaland and Wayne Olds will lead the line. I'll show you the result. Well, I wish I'd live come this game. We actually beat West Ham in the FA Cup 8-0. Erling Haaland with a hat-trick, Mariba with two, Wayne Olds with two, and Dodo with one, completing the scoring. I mean, the match stats aren't as ridiculous as some of the games we've been in, involved in, particularly in terms of draws and defeats. But uh, we managed to absolutely smash West Ham there. Was that in the Premier League? It wasn't. It was in the Premier League. I thought it was in the Cup. How have we got them twice in the Premier League? Leicester's next in the Cup. Even better, I thought it was in the FA Cup, but it's actually in the Prem. That is absolutely ideal. Massively boost now a goal difference. We're still within a point of Manchester City of five points of Arsenal. Well, I'm happy with that. So we do have some deals in the works and I'll show you them should they be confirmed and accepted. But if I don't see you till then, we'll meet at Leicester City next. So we had have, have had a couple of interesting offers coming in for some of our players. The first of which was a £56 million bid from Tottenham for Onjin. I'm not accepting that offer. I would want probably about £20 million more than that. But it was a non-negotiable offer. Lucas Nunes, our backup attacking midfielder, who I would really like to get a lot of game time because he does look like he's got to be a fantastic player, has been offered a loan opportunity at Roma as a regular starter. And I think I'm going to accept it. And now it leaves our squad a little bit thin. And maybe I need to get a loan signing of my own just to help round out the squad a little bit. But the fact that Lucas Nunes is going to get first team football at a club like Roma, I think I've got, I think I'll be stupid to not accept that. Now, in terms of our other bids and stuff, Valencia have come in for Chris Lund, our under twenty three manager, our loan manager, Chris Backhouse has actually accepted this already. Now that quite often happens on Football Manager. Um, if you've got your loan manager set up, he will accept bids for the younger players who come in on loan. But I'm more than happy for this loan to take place. Going to Valencia as a regular starter for one of our youngsters is absolutely great. And hopefully he can come back next season and come back into the first team squad. So that is all good. Jack Butland has, is going to leave the club and he is going to join Liverpool for £29.5 million. And I'm happy with that bit of business. You know, it boosts our transfer budget up to 31 with 80k available in the wage budget. You probably just caught a couple of glimpses of people we're trying to sign right now. Um, uh, we, we are in for another English goalkeeper to come in as backup and an English right wing back to replace uh, George Baldock as our backup. But you'll see them when they get confirmed. And here he is. Our backup goalkeeper is going to be Dean Henderson. We're signing him for £7 million. Of course, Dean was on loan at us for first two seasons, first season, whatever it was. Um, first season, at least while it's main manager, but two seasons at Sheffield United. And whilst he's probably not as good as Jack Butland, I still think he's more than capable of coming in as backup. He's accepted a backup contract. Um, he's on less money than Jack Butland was on. He's only costing us seven million, whereas we've got twenty nine and a half for um, Jack Butland. So essentially, we've traded Jack for Dean for seven million pounds. Uh, not for seven million pounds. Straight swap with a twenty two million pound profit, which I think is a good bit of business so we will take that he's another english player so we're not um registering another uh foreign player which i think we I can only have 17 foreign players in our first team squad so uh, making sure we're getting the english players in is absolutely ideal and particularly in the battle positions you know there's not a lot of english talent available for me to sign that would actually get in our first team purely down to prices more than anything and here is another signing that i've been working on xavier angulo 
Uh, when does he actually join? He joins next January. But I'll quickly show you him anyway. Two million pounds for a Colombian striker who looks pretty decent. So we will accept that. He showed up when I was searching through some young players and stuff like that. So whilst he's a he's not scouted, so it's a little bit of a risk. Um, I think he should come in and at least make us a bit of profit once he does join the squad. So we've just played Leicester City in the FA Cup third round. And as is a football manager tradition, once you smash one team 8-0, you've then got to underperform in the next game. And it's going to be a replay now, which is not ideal. We've got a lot of games to play during January and we could have done without this one. And here is our next signing of the January transfer window. Rhys James comes in from Chelsea for £8 million. He's on quite a bit of a bumper contract in terms of wage. But he has agreed that it will be down to an impact sub, which is what he's going to be in our squad. Obviously, it can cover a number of positions, which is ideal. But the main one will be right wing back for Dodo. George Baldock will be taking a bit of a backseat as his contract runs out at the end of this season. And we were looking for a replacement anyway. And I think Rhys James is going to be quite a capable one. Now, I'm sure in some of some people's saves, he will have uh, developed quite a lot more than he actually has on this one. But he hasn't been getting much game time at Chelsea. Actually, he played pretty much every game last season. Aye. So, I don't know why he hasn't developed. He just hasn't done as well as I've seen him previously. But he's still a very talented English player who's still only 24 years old. So, I'm going to accept this deal. £8 million seems like a bit of a bargain. And we've still got about £14 million to play with, which is nothing to sneeze at. I'm not entirely sure where that's going to be spent. A lot of it might have to do with players who leave, or I might just go on the hunt for some younger players. But um, I'm happy to get Reese James into the squad. So we've just played Bournemouth in the Premier League, and thankfully we managed to get away with a 2-1 away victory. Josh Tymon and Erling Holland got two early goals to set the game up nicely for us, although Callum Wilson did make things edgy in the second half with a 64th minute goal. But thankfully we held on and got the three points. So after that game, Erling Haaland did get injured with a twisted ankle. He's now out for four to five weeks. That means now both of our first choice strikers are currently injured. Obviously him out for five weeks. Esposito still has another two weeks or so to go before he returns to training and full fitness. It might mean we need to sign a striker in January. And our striking wars come to fruition. We've just played Leeds United in the Premier League. And drew 1-1 away from home. Iliax Mariba put us in front from the penalty spot. 53 minutes in. But Demarai Gray equalised in the 87th minute. A dash our hopes of three points today. Um, we had a number of opportunities that we just didn't take. Wayne Knowles and Ponzon started up top. And Wayne Knowles had a decent game at 6.9. But Monzon had a poor game at only a 6.5. And that is not good enough. Uh, Leeds are one of the weakest sides in the league. Currently sitting in 16th position. And even away from home we should be beating them. Right, now it's becoming a little bit of a crisis. Sebastiano Esposito is now out for another six weeks after only just, say, getting to back to returning. Now both of our main strikers are out for even longer. So whilst looking for a striker, there wasn't really anybody who caught me fancy for a reasonable fee. And then I realised, of course, I've got Willem out on loan at Celta Vigo. Not really playing too many games, even though they signed him as a starter. Um, so I've actually recalled him from his loan. So you will be seeing Willem return to the club and hopefully solve our striking issues. We certainly like making it easy against Leicester City. In the FA Cup third round replay we've just played, we won 4-3 at home. But it was 3-3 going into the 93rd minute when we finally got a penalty and Marcus Antonio converted. Ross Barkley had put them 3-3. After it was 3-1 in the 80th minute, Phelan once again to shut this game down. Thankfully, we didn't pay for it this time. Um, penalties is never a strong point in my squads, so I'm happy that we've managed to get through. So we've just played Spurs at home in the Premier League, and to be fair, I don't even think we deserve to win this game or draw it. Spurs were the better side, but thankfully we ended up coming out with the victory. Dodo in the 44th minute with the goal, giving us the three points. Another signing coming through the door, a young English attack midfielder just for the loan till the end of the season to replace Lucas Nunes in the squad. He looks okay. I'm not I'm not too thrilled about giving him game time, to be honest with you. Uh, a player for West Ham, he's obviously not that great in terms of his raw attributes, but I think he'll come in and do a decent enough job should we have another injury crisis on our hands. Now, with only a week or so left to go in the January transfer window, we still have about £9 million and we'll, we'll basically back at the start where we be, we began the uh, the window at. 
Obviously, with Jack Butland leaving, he was able to facil facilitate all of the moves that we've done so far. Um, and it's unlikely we're going to make too many other changes. So I'm just going to blast through the rest of these games, get to the end of the January transfer window, unless something else happens. There is still bids coming in for some of our centre-backs, like Onjin and Kerra. So it could be potentially them moving on. But again, it's not something I'm particularly interested in with only a week left in the window. So the January transfer window is now closed. No further incomings or outgoings were done, so our business is concluded. Only two games that you've missed. First was uh, against Sheffield United. At, uh, Sheffield United. I am Sheffield United. First of which was at home against Brighton, where we won 5 1, avenging the only defeat we've suffered in the league this season. Kerrer, Sanchez, Pellegrini, Olmo, and Josh Tymon with the goals. And finally, we played Burnley in the FA Cup fourth round. Willem started today's game, got himself a brace. Uh, in the 10th minute and the 71st minute to see us through to the FA Cup fourth round. And this is how the league table looks after January. We currently sit in third position where we are now seven points behind Arsenal. We have definitely fallen off the beaten track. Hopefully Arsenal might start to suffer some bad form in the second part of the season and get their first defeat on the board. It's not like they have been dominant in the league or anything. So hopefully that starts to turn around. We are three points behind Manchester City as well, but we do have a game in hand. So we can go level on points with them. And then that's not so bad. In terms of the next episode then, we are going to be playing back in the Champions League. It will be both legs against Borussia Mönchengladbach. A very favourable first knockout round draw we received after finishing um, second in our group. So I'm absolutely delighted with that. If I know this is like unlikely and stuff but Barcelona ended up drawing Manchester City even though they finished top of our group so who knows if we'd managed to beat Barcelona in that final game in the group stage we could have ended up with a much worse draw than this but I'm happy with how things are and I will see you for the next episode but if you have enjoyed it please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy